Welcome, welcome, Sagittarius. Well, it's round two of this video. The first one, I could not get it off my camera and onto my laptop to edit and upload for you guys. So we're refilming and I'm going to clear the space because I just want to make sure that we're getting clear messages and I'm not sure if there's anything to the disruption, but let's Please, sweet Jesus, help us to get these messages up for Sagittarius. And especially Sagittarius rising, I gotta say that, because, you know, yes, watch your moon sign, your sun sign, your rising, of course. Um, but this is probably most gonna resonate for um, the, the Sagittarius risings, because I'm gonna get into astrology. While I'm shuffling, we'll see what random cards come out. Those of you who don't know what your rising sign is, you can go on a free website and get a free natal chart. And on that natal chart, it will tell you what your sun, moon, and rising is. Very, very important. Um, but of course, you know, you have to bear in mind that the most accurate reading is going to be a private one. And so if you're interested in getting one of those, I am offering a special right now for the annual 2022 readings, 60 minutes for $100. And I'll have the link down below for those of you who want it. But let's start off talking about the main energies for you this coming year, this new year. And um, after we go over that, we're gonna break off into sections. Those of you who wanna click ahead to relationships and romance, career and money, health and healing, you can definitely do so. But I like to just talk about the general energies and then see how it pops up again in the subsections, really important. Let's talk about, you know, how you're coming into this new year. Well, I think 2021 was probably very adventurous for you. <laughs> that one didn't wanna go down. Oh, there you are, there you are. Well, it's a princess of wands, uh, kind of like a page of wands, all right? I, I don't know why I saw queen of wands with her, but um, some of you really um, inquisitive and um, excited about something or you're communicating that to other people or other people communicating to you. You know, if I saw that pop up in a career money reading, I'd say it looks like somebody's putting out an application or resume. Somebody's inquiring about a job. We'll see where this goes, okay? Um, but yeah, last year I think was very adventurous for the Sagittarians, um, but probably not the most stable. I think that it's likely that you uh, went through a lot of positive changes and uh, movement in your life. And, you know, that's what's necessary to get changed. Sometimes it's got to, you know, be a little bit of a shake up there. Um, I think that this new year is going to... Uh, give you an easier time than say some other signs and I've been telling all the fixed signs this the fixed signs I'm sorry the mutable signs I should say you're a mutable sign Sagittarius Gemini Pisces and Virgo so I've been telling y'all that the mutable signs are going to fare better this year um, I think the 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 fixed signs it, you know if you have any of those in your life Aquarius, Leo, Scorpio, Taurus, um, those are the signs that are not, not having such an easy time. So be aware of those, be on the lookout, because it is possible that any kind of challenges that you had this year are maybe coming outside of you, um, right? It's other people and their difficulties that are maybe in some way spilling over into your life. I don't really see you on an individual level having a super you know, out of the ordinary, uh, challenging time. Everybody's got their challenges, right? I just think that energetically, um, the mutable signs will have an easier time of it this year than the others. Now, we've got the hangman reverse, so I don't know why, but intuitively, I'm hearing that um, somebody is, like, mentally restless, but yet there's some kind of refusal here as well uh, to see another person's perspective. There's some kind of stuckness and... Not sure what that is all about. We'll keep we'll keep shuffling and see, you know, what comes out if we can flesh out the story a little bit more. Um, some of you, there's been a stall, and it looks like you're anxious to get on with something. Um, maybe a bit of a lull in the energy. Those wanted to see this cards really want to talk. This is good. Um, they were so quiet with Pisces. Um, some of you just very fixed in your way of thinking. Oh, okay, I see now. <clears throat> well, 
All right, so I'm getting a storyline here about a marriage and a family for some of you. And with the Princess of Pentacles, I'm seeing um, this could be two children, okay? And again, these could be adult children now. Take it how it applies. But obviously, fire sign, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius, which I took to be you. Um, and then there's an earth sign, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Looks like there has been some kind of um, breakup in a family. And, you know, if that's not you, I'll speak to that in just a moment, okay? Um yeah, I am seeing that other storyline as well. But let me let me finish my thoughts on this. If there has been a breakup of, of a, a marriage, or that is happening this year, somebody seems unwilling to look at the situation through a new lens. Particularly, I'm seeing this earth sign just kind of like, I'm not looking at it, okay? Um, yeah, this could be a broken home, a broken marriage. For some of you, Right, if you're going to say, well, that doesn't have to do with me. Um, what I'm seeing here is there is resistance to seeing things through another set of lenses having to do with values, emotional values. Might also have to do with money as well. And I, I feel led also to say that if you have not been able to get whatever is your ideal in life, if it's, you know, being able to settle down with someone, um, have that white picket fence, whatever that is for you, um, it is likely because there has been a misalignment of values, whoever you've been trying to partner with. And somebody is, I'm now hearing immovable that there, there's an unwillingness to shift out of this and say, you know what, if I really want to go after what I want, I'm going to have to align myself with people who can give me some forward movement because we actually are aligned with our values. Very interesting message there. Well, you know, and this home and family storyline might just resonate for you because, you know, this year Jupiter will be in your fourth house. And so um, at bare minimum, some of you are going to find your comfort zone and settle into it. Even if that is, you know, as a totally single individual, I can see that happening. Now, your main direction in life this year overall has to do with the North Node going into the 6th and 5th houses this year, uh, which is putting your South Node in the 12th and 8th, 11th houses, right? And, and South Node is what you're having to release. North Node is what you're moving towards. So generally speaking, this is fantastic for getting ahead on matters having to do with your everyday life, 6th house, right? Having to do with the daily routines, the work habits. Um, should be really good with um, your earnings. And also good for making advances with a health regimen, if you're interested in that, or a workout routine. And getting caught up on any kind of outstanding healthcare checkups um, or healthcare needs that you have are supported. Maybe if last year you weren't able to get all the, you know, say dental work done that you wanted, um, you're going to finally get in this year. You're going to really be pushed and directed towards getting in and getting caught up on outstanding um, health matters. It's also a time, though, you know, with the South Node in that 12th and 11th house where perhaps because of all of this activity you're doing on just the mundane practical level in life, um, so the, the spiritual side of life is taking more of a backseat, you know, to give that mundane side of life more, more of a focus and center stage. Now, in April, the North Node is going to go into your fifth house. It'll move from your sixth to your fifth house. And the fifth house has to do with fun, dating, romance, children. Again, I saw possibly two children. And these might be adult children at this age, stage in life. Okay, just take it how it applies. Um, if you are single, though, let me say that uh, with the North Node in the fifth house, your chance of meeting your match is very good this year. Because I think that you're going to be putting yourself out there more. If you are coupled, um, 
you know, and you're wanting to have children, the chance of pregnancy and fertility is really increased. Um, at bare minimum, I think this is a year we're going to have a lot more fun. And romance is definitely out there for you if you want it. Professionally, it could be a very active time uh, where you can be involved in plenty of new creative projects and initiatives. And whatever creative ideas you have, they're very likely to bring you success this year, especially if they have to do with the arts, entertainment, or inventing something. However, this puts the South Node in the 11th house, so there might be some aspect of friendships or your social life that is taken a back seat in some way. Or perhaps you're having to um, let go of some ideal that you had in order to, um, you know, focus on just being fun and, you know, getting out there and dating and having the romance in your life that you want. Now, Knight of Swords in reverse came out here, and that was while I was talking about this time of April to mid-July with that North Node in your fifth house. Um, you might feel a loss of direction at that time. Um, some of you, again, if you're just like letting go of something that you had idealized, just to go after living in the moment, um, I, I could see really this representing a disregard for the consequences. Um, but again, it, it could definitely be very temporary. It's just like during those months, April to mid-July, you're just like, ah, oh, to hell with it. I'm going to go have fun. I know this isn't my, you know, idea of happily ever after, but I'm just going to roll with it, you know. Some of you be aware of having a very scattered mind because I can see that energy there. If this is not at all you, it might be an air sign, Aquarius, Libra, Gemini. But getting back to the astrology, let's say, what is the good luck and fortune for you this year? Really important. Um, well, it's, you know, in the fourth house for you and the fifth house as well. Um, basically, you know, Jupiter is going to be in Pisces in your fourth house till May and then also November, December. Okay, so... That is really giving you expansion, good luck, fortune with matters having to do with home, family, sense of belonging. Perhaps a Cancerian is relevant to you. Um, this very nurturing, protective type of energy. Um, so uh, be, getting around a Cancer might in some way benefit you. I do see a lot of, some. there's some heaviness though about this, okay? So let me say this as well with Jupiter. I mean, we're very quick to say, oh, it's a benefic planet, and it is. Um, but there's kind of a duality there that, that shouldn't be swept under the rug. Jupiter can also magnify issues. So if there was some kind of, if there was, is some kind of heaviness going on with maybe the breakup of, of a, a marriage or a family and you know, with Jupiter there in that sector, the first five months of this year, it could really put a magnifying glass on the he these heavy matters um, that you're having to work through. I mean, overall, it's a positive energy. If there have been um, some, if there has been some heaviness, I think it'll lighten it up. If there has been some, you know, rough spots, it'll help smooth it out. Overall, it's good, but it does seem like, um, it's not entirely light and fluffy, okay? Um, now, when Jupiter gets out of Pisces and moves into Aries, it will also go into your fifth house, and that's about the fun dating romance. So there you go again with another layer of energy showing that um, you're getting blessed in terms of really putting yourself out there, having fun, Especially if you're dating, you know, finding somebody, having a lot of prospects. If you're putting yourself out there, my gosh, what is wrong with those cards? Oh, dear. I mean, again, energetically, and that seems to be a total, these are, this is like a total contradiction here. But we're going to see where this goes with the cards. Let me say with the energy alone, you know, let's say if you're partnered while Jupiter is in your fifth house, that should actually improve things with your relationship, having more fun and romance in that relationship. Yet I'm seeing a contradiction here in the cards. I'm seeing uh, some kind of separation. 
I'm seeing um, there might be some kind of uh, solitude that is painful, some kind of isolation that is painful. And looking at where the challenges are for you this year, you've got Saturn in the second house and third house. So let me say, I want to warn you because we're going to, hopefully as this reading develops, we're going to make sense out of this because I'm going to be honest with you. This, these cards are kind of contradicting the astrology, but we're going to make sense of it together. Okay. Um, with Saturn in your second house of money, um, possessions, sense of self-worth, and then, you know, later on from like April to mid-July, um, Saturn goes into your third house, having to do with communication, siblings, neighbors. Um, you will need to be careful of cash shortages this year, and perhaps also it could be that people are asking to borrow money from you. I don't know that necessarily you're having a problem with money. Um, but if, if you aren't, people are maybe coming to you and saying, can I borrow money? And you're going to have to like be careful about that. Some of you really have taken on a lot of responsibilities on your own and you, you just can't. You cannot support other people with their financial struggles because you've already taken on a lot. And so there might be a feeling, again, that you're alone in, in bearing this burden or other people feel alone in bearing their burdens because they're not being supported. So I do want to caution you about that. But yeah, April to mid-July uh, with Saturn moving into this third house, be aware of difficulties having to do with communications, specifically involving siblings, neighbors, people that you're dealing with on the day-to-day. -day. And I'm seeing uh, with the Two of Cups here, these are people that you... You really love and care about them, okay? It's it's a number of people, okay? I don't want to be quick to say this is a love partner. We'll get into the love reading and see if it comes up again. But generally, I mean, this could be friends, family. It, it could be lovers, partners. It's people that you care about. And at the foundation, King of Swords could be an Aquarius, a Libra, a Gemini. But I am seeing this overall, this energy of um, someone very logical, very much in their rational mind of, I know what I need to do and I'm going to do it. And I'm going to take care of what needs to be done here. It's quite an interesting reading. Let's get on to love and relationships. And I want to talk to you about Venus and Mars retrograde this year, um, which might bring up some difficulties in relationships. I want to warn you about um, Venus is going to be retrograde in your 11th house until the end of January. So that is going to bring for a lot of us collectively a reevaluation of what we value. But um, specific to you, it might have to do with your um, your ideals, what you what you have idealized in love, which I saw in that main reading. The Queen of Pentacles could be a Taurus Virgo Capricorn that is relevant. I am seeing, though, with that energy that somebody's putting like a cold shoulder out there. Um, and I see a lot of fears, doubts, suspicions, and unequal give and take. Somebody might be dishonest. Somebody might be, you know, not, not operating in integrity, uh, maybe sneaking around, cheating. We'll see. We'll see where this goes. Okay. Uh, but I also see this female here is very guarded. This earth sign is very on guard about this. Like if, if. There is not any lying, cheating, sneaking around going on. Somebody's definitely on the lookout for it, and they're very suspicious about it. But I think that um, the biggest challenge for you this year in terms of retrogrades is going to be from March, um, August onward, I should say, um, when Mars is in your seventh house of long-term committed partnerships. So it'll be... Um, also, October till the end of the year is another hot spot time. Beware of any kind of conflicts or disputes that come up in relationships this, you know, last half of the year, okay? I think overall, um, it, there is an energy that, yeah, I mean, there might be some passion in relationships, but it could, could come out in the form of arguments if you don't watch it and... I think the first half of the year in these relationships, um, it's going to be a very freedom-loving vibe um, and almost a very intellectual vibe, which I saw over here, you know. 
where people are being kind of, to some degree, they're being rational or logical. Um, they're having fun. But as we get into the second half of the year, when Jupiter goes into Aries, um, that's when things get a lot more passionate. So if there are difficulties in relationships, particularly with communicating, I think the first half of the year, you have a better chance of remaining, you know, keeping a cool head. And keeping things lighthearted, it's just when we get in the second half of the year, that's when there could be like passionate explosions and not the kind we like. <laughs> you know, not those kind. All right, so yes, um, even in January, there might be some disagreements that come up, okay? I'm not going to lie to you. Um, it, and if they do come up in January during that Venus retrograde, um, it's really leading you to, some of you may want to give up on a relationship during this time, but I think that things might suddenly, they could suddenly turn around, all right? And I am seeing with the cards here that somebody is going to get closure to this, all right? Whatever this cheating scenario or sneaking around looks like there's an ending here and a new beginning, Some of you might be getting a new home uh, with a partner or a partner, uh, some someone you're romantically involved with is getting a new home. I don't know if you're living together or they're moving to another location, something like that. But I think around, if they're going to, you know, if you're disappointed in January and the arguments are really making you think, oh, I need to end this, all right, I feel that things could really turn around out of nowhere by March, so... Um, and, and if you can make it through to March, things could prob will probably continue to improve the rest of the year. And it is likely that this will be, you know, a relationship that you got started last year. Okay, whoever this person is, is from last year. So, this is an interesting dynamic here. So, I'm, I'm seeing a couple things. Some of, someone is holding back from saying what they're thinking. Um, I'm also seeing another storyline here that there might be some biting words about another person holding back. There is definitely a new beginning here, but there is something about biting words coming between a couple or trying not to allow the biting words to come between a couple. I think overall in January with this Venus and Capricorn retrograde in your 11th house, you are revising or re-envisioning something having to do with your love life. And I, I think that the energy is going to be a lot better for you in February. So just, you know, hang on because I think um, as you get into February, March, and so on, things should improve. And you know what? If you're wanting to get married this year or you're trying to find a soulmate this year, I think the chances are pretty good. But again, I see that it's probably energetically going to involve somebody that you already know, that you might probably might have known for quite a quite a while. Okay, this is not going to be a sudden popping up of, you know, a surprise out of nowhere. Now, in May, when Jupiter goes into Aries, this is going to give you a greater drive and passion to overcome difficulties particularly if you're single so if you're coupled this is gonna spice up the relationship so um you use that spice in the bedroom if you can um, but do be careful with the drama and know that in august when mars is in gemini it could be a time when desires and passions can heat up even more and if passion is coming more in the form of arguments or disagreements this could prove to be quite challenging and difficult, especially from October to the end of the year. My advice is try to settle these disagreements uh, well before you get into October, okay? Because it'll come up at, at that time if you don't. And the energy at that time is just pretty, um, is going to be very challenging for a lot of people, a lot of people collectively. August is going to be really probably the most challenging month of this year. Um with Mars and Gemini, plus there's a, a, a triple conjunction I'll talk about in a bit, but um, with Mars and Gemini in August and 
you know, this planet going retrograde from October to the end of the year, it's going to demand a lot more attention to conflict resolution with others. In general, I think it's going to be a year when relationships of all kinds are going to take center stage for you. Now, I see growth and expansion here. So one of two things is happening. Somebody is trying to hold back divisive words. They're, they're getting a new beginning and they're trying to hold back a divisive words and that's bringing growth and expansion in this relationship. I'm also seeing another storyline of somebody who is not holding back the words, they're putting it out there and the biting words are like, hey, I don't like the way that you're holding back from me. And by really uh, dealing with that conversation head on, there's growth and expansion. And at the foundation, you've got four of chalices and wow. That's a four there. Some of you, what I'm seeing this year is I think things are going to be um, kind of the same on an emotional and financial level. There's going to be some carryover from last year. I do want to caution you, though, about, uh, I don't know why I'm being brought to these daily routines and habits that you have. There might be something that you're doing on the day-to-day -day that you need to consider particularly when the North Node is in your sixth house between now and April, okay? Um, it's something that you're doing that is maybe keeping you a, a bit stuck, okay? And it seemed like I saw some stuck energy over here. Yeah. there's th This is all stuck energy. That, that, that... And some of you really what I'm seeing with this Empress is that the growth you're getting is on the home front. I'm seeing it from beginning to end here. This has to do with the tangibles, okay? Uh, maybe a new home or you're nurturing that home life. You're creating a sanctuary at home. Okay, so not a lot, honestly, uh, having to do with relationships and romance. I was hoping to get more out of this cards, but let's move on to career and money and there's a lot a lot of astrology having to do with your money and that might be why i kept seeing you know that ace of pentacles showing up in your love reading and the empress and you know i see what's going on in your fourth house this year some of you are going to avoid a fallout absolutely with the tower in reverse some of you are afraid of a fallout i think you're going to avoid it and it might be you know on the monetary front because you realize you're going to have to be frugal you're going to have to save plan invest you're going to have to be careful who and what you invest in this year because some of you have just taken on i don't know some of you yes might have overextended yourselves others of you you're just right at the line okay you're just like you you're at the point where you're at a cutoff point you can't take on anything more and so i think you're going to start managing uh, your responsibilities and your obligations from this place of, um, you know, avoiding any kind of financial fallout. Now, with Jupiter and Pisces till May, this is going to bring a lot of good fortune to you, but you still got to pay attention to your money, especially in January with that Venus retrograde in Capricorn. And also, you know, throughout the year, there's going to be changes to your routine and your work that might make you feel unstable at times, while other times um, it, it might be that you're deeply desiring these changes, okay? Well, now we've got a King of Pentacles in reverse, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, some of you working um, in industries having to do with banking, investing, real estate, food service, basically anything having to do with the tangibles of life, maybe property management, you know, it's the stuff that you can't, we can't live without food, clothing, and shelter. So you work in some line of work uh, having to do with that. It could be a boss there as well. With a temperance card though, I see that you're balancing out your income with your expenses, but there might be some domestic harmony, disharmony, um, maybe some fighting, and, and it might have to do with a Cancer or a Sagittarius. 
Uh, I saw the earth signs over here, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. I'm seeing possibly an Aries or a mother figure, and I'm seeing possibly an Aquarius. A lot of signs here, and now there's a strength card, so it might be a Leo. A lot of signs showing up here, a lot of people, okay? There we go again with what I said before with the astrology, that there's going to be an emphasis on relationships this year. So we see this coming out, like, I don't know, other people and their money showing up in your financial reading, but... <laughs> Let me try to read this regardless of people. Let me read it as straight energies, okay? It looks like you're going to avoid a fallout with a person that perhaps you don't entirely trust. There might be some valid trust issues with this person. Um, you may perceive this person to be controlling or, um, you know, greedy, maybe. Um, maybe somebody who ha is or has been corrupt and again, this could be an earth sign or a um, Sagittarius or a Cancer, okay? Um, this might be somebody who you deem as they've got to win at any cost. Um, they might be in debt or they put you in debt. There's something really shady on a financial level. And I'm hearing insecure. Somebody doesn't feel insecure, okay? But I feel that perhaps, yeah, you're avoiding a fallout with this person because maybe something is balancing out finally. But this is the odd thing is that this is a this is a card indicating um, harmony. And this is a card indicating disharmony. So what is going on? I mean, I'm just really going to have to clarify that. Let me pull from Lenormand. Um, and the disharmony might have to do with, you know, at home, on the home front, uh, might have to do with, like I said, a mother figure or an Aquarian. Uh, I'm trying not to bring these people into it. But if it's not about people, it's about you feeling that you're not getting growth. Some of you are trying to balance out your income and expenses after dealing with debt. You're trying to avoid a fallout with debt. Balance your income and expenses. Some of you, this is maybe putting... Uh, putting some imbalance at home although i see a lot of a lot of astrological energy supporting you getting balance and maybe maybe things are upside and it, and it might have to do with you know your ideals your aspirations having to do with like some of you have very strong ambitions also very very strong ambitions yet somehow your home life has been upside down and you're trying to balance this out. I, I really got to go clarify this. Tell me about the temperance, please. Tell me about the temperance. This is somebody that you're talking to. This is somebody who is maybe giving you wise counsel. Or you're giving them wise counsel. Some of you are turning to an advisor during this year about handling debt. I don't know why I'm hearing and seeing for some of you. Um, debt consolidation. I'm hearing credit re repair, restoration, something like that. Um, but again, this might have to do with a marital commitment. Um, or some type of contract or agreement and their secrets here. And more talking, talking, talking. Okay, this is more of a gossip. This is more of an advisor, all right? What is it with the Empress? Some of you have not been getting growth with your ambitions. And you have very strong ambitions. But for the time being, you're having to focus on balancing things out in your world. Bringing harmony where there's been disharmony, but something cannot be trusted. Who is this? Who is this? Who or what is this? King of Pentacles in reverse. King of Pentacles in reverse. Please show me. Please show me clearly. Okay, this one. Well, you know, this might be somebody again who is a boss. Somebody in authority. Somebody who works with or for a large institution, maybe the government, or might be tied to the government. What is this Empress in reverse? What is this Empress in reverse? Please show me clearly, okay? Well, yeah, it's it's funny. It, it popped out in reverse, just like the Empress in reverse. Like, you're not getting growth. You're not getting expansion. You're not getting forward movement with this. She's, she's upset. She's looking at it, though, like, we need to figure this out. Tell me about the stars.
Some of you, this has to do with a new beginning. Um, some of you are hoping to have a, um, a child or children, or you're hoping for some brand new beginning. I don't know why that's coming up in, in the career and money. Cause it's like the cards for relationships and romance were pretty bleak. I mean, they weren't really talking and now these are talking, but let's go with it. Cause I'm also seeing another storyline here with this, like somebody switching partners. Okay. What is the strength? What is the strength card? I just heard the word tenacious. I don't know why. You, you, there's something about this timeline, okay, that you're not seeing clearly coming into the first half of this year. Um, actually, now I'm being corrected and I'm being told that during all these retrogrades of this year, you're going to be reflecting and trying to get some clarity because it's almost like there's some kind of shift going on. There's something out of balance that needs to get balanced. Something that is unhealed that needs to be healed and it's like this entire year you're avoiding this this fallout i'm going to try to clean this up a bit the spread so we can see what we're doing i'm going to keep going because i kind of got a little bit off track there but let's roll with it i do want to advise i mean i do see with the astrology you are deeply just des desiring change and i see it here here and here very strong ambitions you want things to change for the better my advice would be, you know, try to remain open to change. Try to make the most of it, no matter what unexpected twists and turns come up. This is unexpected twists and turns. This is like, you know, you want to go for the goal, but it, it's not a straight line there, okay? It's a lot of over the hills and through the woods nonsense, if you ask me. The the air sign in me doesn't like it, right? I mean, maybe, maybe fire sign finds it adventurous, but <laughs> ain't nobody got time for that in, in Aquarius land. <laughs> but anyway, I do think that it's very possible that by August or September, you will get some kind of recognition for this. And I did see that there with the stars card, um, that yes, very, very possibly you, you will get some positive new beginning change, uh, recognized, but it's just, it's, it's not going to be an easy, smooth, straightforward path. So try to stay encouraged. Okay. Um, all the way up through August, September. Now, if you are looking for a job or a promotion, probably the best time to find it is going to be February 8th through March 22nd. This might bring in a position um, that has good pay and a lot of growth potential. If you are unemployed, try to remain open and on the lookout for new opportunities. It could be something from your past coming up, um, especially during the retrogrades. Um, you, you could see these opportunities from the past reappear in your life, especially in August and September. In the meantime, consider taking on something new, um, like starting a new business. And maybe that new business would involve some old contacts or old connections. And for some, it might just simply be that you're somebody's giving you a, a recommendation or a referral. For others of you, it might be about forming like a joint business venture together. And I got to say, any of you working in technology, that work is very highly favored this year. Now, here we go again with this hangman. And we saw that in the general reading in the reverse. So what's going on? That something, there's this stuck in energy that continues possibly because with six of swords in reverse you have some unresolved issues uh, that you need to tend to before you can actually get on with it i mean you want to might want to bolt on out of there but it's kind of like trying to leave the restaurant before you paid for your meal like there's some energy going on like you gotta you gotta handle something before you can get on um, it's an unresolved issue and for others of you, the stuckness is because there's an unwillingness to change. And I saw that back in the main spread. I see that. Yeah. Some of you hanging on to some ideals that are or misalignments that are just not going to get you where you need to go. And with the eight of wands in reverse, miscommunication, missed opportunities because, um, and I'm seeing a, things are not getting forward movement here, just like they weren't getting growth over there. You see the lack of forward movement, but it all seems tied. And, and, and don't let me let me remind those who are listening and getting discouraged. 
This doesn't mean that you can't get forward movement. This doesn't mean that this is faded for you, okay? I can look at these cards and I can pretty much tell you that if you will heal this issue, whatever, whoever this person is, with a mistrust, the debt, if you will balance that out and take care of your home life more, things will shift okay some of you especially if there is some shady stuff going on which i saw in the love reading with that seven of swords um and i'm seeing here with the tower like something in your midst is not on solid ground there's a lack of integrity where did i see that seven of swords there's a lack of wholeness and integrity you know about it because this is somebody the both of these energies here with the the tower in reverse and this earth sign in reverse these are integrity issues so if you deal with that and right it's kind of like in the love reading if you get rid of the misalignments in your life you get rid of the integrity issues you start making decisions based on what is whole and true for you and is going to get you get you the movement that you want in life because you're rightly aligned with the people and the opportunities that are going to get you to where you're going. Well, then we can we can put these in reverse, right? Or actually upright. Where you get the growth. You get the forward movement. So don't think that these cards are telling you that you're doomed. These cards are actually advising you on how you move out of this. You want to move out of this stuckness? These delays? These misunderstandings? Well, there's somebody's got to pay the piper for something here. Okay? And yes, with the justice card, I'm seeing here that there's a lack of accountability, a lack of fairness, similar to what I saw here. Someone wants, wants to dip out, wants to sneak around, doesn't want to answer to anything. It's not fair. And, and then the not fair goes back to, I don't know whose business I'm getting into. I feel like it's a relationship reading. Okay. Three of Wands. Some of you are waiting on things to get forward movement in your life all right those popped out when i was talking about those of you who are looking for you know maybe an employment opportunity and i'm trying to look at this through the lens some of you you need to try to maybe look at your situation through a different lens and i'm going to say that if during this year you are waiting around for you know some forward movement you're gonna have to see it from a different perspective and you might have to make some sacrifices in order to right put that in the upright and get on with it get on with life and get some progress again that would put that in the upright but it's all hinging on your ability to get out of this fixed way of thinking um and a lot of times we're fixed and we're immovable in our thinking. And I, and I saw that in the main spread too with that Knight of Swords in reverse. It's because we're trying to control outcomes or we don't want the risk or we don't want the responsibility. So we paint ourselves into a corner and spirits like, no, I want you to get out of that. I want you to take the responsibility or I want you to take the risk. I want you to let that thing go from your life. So you can make space for something new. A Libra might be relevant. I am seeing a lot of waiting here, though, from beginning to end. Okay. And so I'm going to warn those of you who are unemployed this year. Um, I don't know why I just heard wait broke the gate. Um, you know, you could be waiting for a while. I don't, again, I don't want to discourage people. But um, use that fire to um, come up with some other way some other way to get the forward movement because if you're waiting on somebody to kind of untie you from this right or you're waiting for your ships to come in and now i'm hearing you you got to do for yourself or don't expect others to do for you what you can do for yourself okay uh, no more waiting around all right i don't know who that's for now the business owners i'm going to say that this is a year where there's going to be a lot of people working from home, a lot of work at home opportunities, remote jobs. And the reason I'm bringing this up for you is because your competitors know about it and they're doing it. And it's giving them the edge. It's, it's making them more competitive because they're bringing their overhead down. And so in the same way, you might want to 
you might want to do the same thing. I don't think it's going to be a good year for opening up more office space or brick and mortar locations, unless you must. Okay. But overall, I do say, I do see that it's very likely that your profits will increase. So many cards, so many cards. Um, it's very possible that the profits will increase. I'm going to take the one that is upright or we're never going to finish this reading. With the Hermit in reverse, it might have to do with a Virgo. It might have to also do with somebody who is holding them, like uh, holding themselves back because they've decided within themselves, well, this is what I need to do for now. This is, then they don't have to. They don't have to be isolated. They don't have to hold themselves back. But I think that some of you, you know, you're you're going to hold back um, and wait for the expansion to come to you. I don't know if you're necessarily going to put yourself out there. Knave of Pentacles, um, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. I do see good good money news coming your way. Very good money news coming your way. And what is that good money news about? What is that good money news about? Okay. Oh my gosh, Sagittarius, what on earth? Whatever it is, somebody's jealous of you, okay? Whatever it is, I'm, I'm not going to, you know, it's like I'm opening up a can of worms, okay? Somebody needs a private reading here. <laughs> this is drama. And I don't remember the first reading I did for y'all being this dramatic, and y'all saw me clear the space and shuffle. So, wow, wow, wow. <laughs> All right, let me move on and talk to y'all about investments. Um, be careful this year with that. Do your homework because there's a lot of disruption in the markets, especially in February. And I'm going to talk more about that um, in January. I'm probably going to put out some videos on crypto. Um, but in February, we're having that Pluto return in the United States. It's impacting the second house, having to do with people's personal income. So, you know, just be careful. And personally, you know, for whatever it's worth, I mean, I'm looking at trying to invest in February because there could be some clearance prices, you know. And then I think by August and September, uh, there will be a lot of gains by then. You could buy, buy low in February, sell high in August, of course. You know, do your own research, make your own decisions, right? Uh, not financial advice. Um, also, this is a really good year for real estate purchases. Um, but you just got to be careful about investments and fraud and scams as usual. Um, because I do believe that this is a year where there will be a lot of financially desperate people. I think just generally the energy, you know, is that way. I talked about that in my 2022 um, astrology forecast that's for the collective, okay, that I'll have at the end of this video. If you want to click on through, you can watch it. But um, again, I said that some people might be coming to you to borrow money and um, they're not doing so hot. And I don't know, you know, how well you're doing because you might have reached the end of your line and you're avoiding a fallout. But you can't take on any more responsibilities in all likelihood. Um, you know, these might be people I am getting here and here that somebody is like suspicious. There's a jealousy, suspicion, um, maybe about money. Okay. And, and any good news that comes in, people see you advancing and there can be, um, this energy of somebody being really, um, defensive okay and it might be you again if you're dealing with people around you who are jealous of the way that you are getting forward movement in your life financially or some good money news that comes in uh, you might be a little bit um, defensive or edgy or you you know you're hesitant to share your good news with them because you don't want them to be jealous um, you might be questioning them or their motives um i, I wow that's a really weird message Sagittarius. Okay. Uh, I think that overall this year, you're probably going to choose very wisely who and what you're going to invest in, if anything at all. Students, let me say very briefly, I think that creativity and resourcefulness are probably going to be necessary for accomplishing your goals this year. It is possible that you will change schools mid-year and that, you know, Venus retrograde at the beginning of the year and hitting your second house really is going to have you examining how you need to be more efficient and economical with your money 
and it is advised for you to steer clear of wasteful spending or misappropriation of resources. Mercury is also going to be retrograde in January, and this might affect your work or have you reassessing what you're doing to earn an income. It could bring delays when working with others, and it might be that during this time, income gets a little bit rocky, especially if you earn it through commissions or freelance work. So it, that might be a good time for you to try to renegotiate contracts or agreements, but it will be tricky because of Mercury being retrograde. So yeah, because that could create a higher risk of misunderstandings. And I did see some misunderstandings there. So just be careful with that. If there are misunderstandings, I'm going to tell you with the cards, it's telling me the reason why is because someone does not want accountability. And there is some kind of jealousy or... Um, hesitancy or um defensiveness or you know this almost suspicious type of why do you want to know that why do you need to you know or i, I don't that you don't need to know that information or you know questioning what they're going to do with that information it's I, i'm not a fan of it um by february though these rough patches should smooth out and Jupiter in the fourth house should make home more of a refuge, hopefully, or sanctuary from whatever stresses came up in February, um, January. Yeah. And so as an added bonus with Jupiter, um, it's going to boost your personal development and relationships since it's in Pisces, which is a fellow um, mutable sign. So I see things getting better here with the sun. And what's getting better is um, Four of Pentacles in reverse. Again, more nasty energy of somebody being very controlling with money. I saw it there. I saw it there. Uh, this greedy, hoarding type of energy. Um, it's all around here with the money. I've seen it all over. So I'm going to tell you that if things are not smoothing out, what this is indicating is that a spotlight is going to get shown on it for healing. It's like going to be out in the open like, look at this. Look at this ugly little demon that we need to purify and purge, you know? Um, the sun trumps everything. It's very positive, but you got, there's a lot of negativity surrounding money. I'm not going to lie to you. And I don't know, I don't think it necessarily means that you're doing bad with money. I don't. I think that you're probably doing good, but I'm getting some kind of vibe of somebody doesn't want to share or they don't want people to know what they have. It's a weird message. I, it, it could very well come out in the open. It could get exposed. Okay. So it, with that sun card, that could definitely get brought out in the open. I'm also seeing that there could be some unexpected money coming in from March to June with the astrology. And that, again, might be, I, given the cards, it is such a blessing here. But it's almost like somebody's trying to hide it. If you do want to supplement your income this year, it might be through some old hobby or unutilized skill that you're able to do this. Now, we've got retrogrades January, May, September, and December, and these are bringing up some key opportunities to review how you're working and whom you're working for. And like I said, could bring up some old contacts from the past, old connections, and opportunities that get revived, all right? And maybe even bring up some sudden changes in your life, your work life, so that you can positively pivot and work this to your advantage. Let me look at the foundation. I'm going to stop shuffling. Knave of Wands in reverse. Well, um, again, fire sign, Aries, Leo, Sagittarius here. Be careful of communication problems. And I told you why. It's got all this mistrust stuff going on from beginning to end of this reading about money and resources. So someone it might be a fire sign is creating some kind of conflict a kid could be a children because i'm seeing one two was there another page here i don't think so okay it could be two children or it could simply just be messages all right but i see some communication struggles and conflicts and somebody's not not hearing or listening or they don't want to they don't want other people to hear it <laughs> they don't want other people to know they don't want accountability okay but yeah, in March, we're going to have the first Uranus-Mars square, which is impacting your sixth and third houses, respectively. So pay attention to any kind of um, unstable health and well-being issues that the Uranus transit through your sixth house has likely caused. Not a good month for you to travel in March. 
because you know when these two planets come together in this way it can make you more accident prone especially to if you're taking short distance trips like in your neighborhood just be careful my sagittarius daughter got into a car accident last year i was in the car with her when it happened everybody's okay but it occurred like less than five minutes away from my house and we we're just going out to have lunch together and boom out of nowhere it happened and i'm bringing this up because this is an energy from last year that is carrying over into this year so you might have already experienced this it is reappearing next year it's just a warning be careful because um it can make you a lot more accident prone to um I'm not telling you to stay home, right? I don't live in fear. Please do not. Uh, just be, you know, proactive. Be mindful. And let me also say that um, those of you who are looking to move this year, wondering if there's going to be a move this year, I didn't really see it in the cards. Actually, I saw some cards indicating not getting forward movement, and I told you what you need to do to do it, okay? And that kind of indicates not moving forward. That six of swords in reverse, not moving forward. That, I mean, I, I could point out so many here not moving okay but that's the cards in the astrology i will say if you were to move for sagittarius rising rising okay you're most likely to move april 14th through may 24th because Pis mars is going to be in pisces in your fourth house and jupiter is going to be there in that fourth house as well so um this could bring about you know a great turnaround for many difficulties that came up in March, you know, um, the following month, it's just a great time to think, turn things around. And in May, you might have a house party or a house warming party. And it's quite possible that you, you know, with that energy, particularly for Sagittarius Risings, you could get a new home or you're investing in real estate during this time, or it might be a good time for you to make an investment in real estate. But either way it goes down, you're going to be blessed by that transit. And April is really going to be a great month for you with these fourth house matters. And then finally, in May, Jupiter going into Aries in your fifth house. Well, that's adding more good times to your life. This time with fun, dating, romance, maybe children. And so you could be attending more gatherings and parties and maybe starting new creative projects. It's really going to be a good time for you to start something new. So let me try to get some advice for you. That jumps unlimited ideas your mind is one with god's infinite mind therefore you have complete access to unlimited ideas guaranteed to bring blessings all you need to do is to take divinely guided action to allow these ideas to come to fruition i think i told you guys earlier that um this could be a year when you come up with some really fantastic ideas that could um uh, move you forward like, if you have any creative ideas, I told you, with that north node in your fifth house from April onward, um, you could have a lot of success. Especially, it has to do with the arts, entertainment, invention. And a lot of signs are getting that as well, the power of prayer. Give the situation to God for uplifting, healing, be open to miracles, heaven's unlimited resources, love and answers are waiting are awaiting your prayers be sure to act upon the divine guidance god gives to you in response to your prayers well let me say that i do see with um that temperance card right there spirit is with you this is the angelic realm okay so if you're worried about your money this year if you're having trust issues or you're trying to avoid a financial fallout maybe there's debt that you're managing or somebody in your midst that you don't trust maybe a boss um I do feel like spirit is right there uh, trying trying to help you with this, okay? But you got to send those prayers up and put those angels on assignment. Put them to task. Tell them what you need. You got to spell it out. It's like they're waiting. They're waiting for you to send them on assignment. All right, let's um, move on and talk about health and healing. We're going to wrap this up um and see what the cards have to say but um with jupiter and pisces till may this is going to improve your connection with family and after may when jupiter goes into aries it's going to really i think boost your confidence your sense of optimism and then by november 22nd when the sun goes into sagittarius 
probably going to be feeling a lot more revitalized during that time. And then the new moon in Sagittarius on November 23rd, uh, feeling a lot more emotionally encouraged and secure. Very good energies for you coming throughout this year. Now, what is a little bit tricky is with a Mars, Uranus, North Node, triple conjunction impacting your sixth house in uh, late summer, early fall, um, actually like late July, early August. Um, this is not a time to throw caution to the wind with your health, okay? Um, it's probably just not going to go well if you do that, all right? Uh, be very careful because this is impacting an, an area of your life having to do with your health and your work life. So, you know, I'm trying to forearm you by forewarning you prepare for a rough month and it doesn't necessarily have to be rough for you like I said from the start you will probably fare better than the others um, but it will be rough for many okay particularly fixed signs um, it's just overall collectively bad astrological weather it will pass it's temporary um, but the and the impact is different for different people right because we're all getting impacted in different houses for you it's that sixth house and so it may involve you working on unfinished business from last year, um, but don't worry about that, okay? Because I think that by year's end, with Jupiter going back into your fourth house, this is helping you to reclaim your comfort zone that hopefully you felt, you know, the first five months of this year, if somehow you get away from it <laughs> for a bit there, you know, in the second half of the year, well, by late November and then December, you'll be back in that that comfort zone. You will reclaim it. And like I said, you know, earlier about be careful about being accident prone. Uh, you could also be prone to infections. Okay. Um, so make sure that you're eating well and um, eating, consuming a diet that is immune boosting. By the way, I have a video on my alternative health playlist where I um, talk about how to boost your immune system naturally. Deliverance and influence very interesting this is the healing advice for you this year influence is about courtship mutual attraction genuine affection natural magnetism stimulation connecting so it could be somebody in particular but it could have to do with the relationships all this relationship activity you have going on this year as a whole yeah it might be a special someone who is in need of deliverance okay um, and maybe it's you, maybe it's you looking at your relationships and how deliverance factors into, um, these dynamics, um, regardless of who's getting release relief. Um, but some of you, I really am being taken back to this, this hangman card. Okay. About... The stuckness and a need for perspective, okay, and a need to take a fresh approach and get liberation from whatever is obstructing you and finding a solution. I'm feeling intuitively that there are going to be people around you this year that are going to, in some way, uh, maybe not the way you envision, okay, but in some way they are influencing you to get delivered out of whatever this stuckness is or come out of this mindset that is maybe fixed and inflexible. Um, and again, it might not be what you want, okay, but it gets you moving forward. So I hope that uh, something I've said here has blessed you. Please know I'm wishing you all the best. A wonderful 2022. Until next time, y'all be blessed.